So what's happening more frequently these days is that people who were raised Christian, particularly young people, but not just young people, enter into a season of doubt and they head online and they seek privately some answers for their doubt and they end up on one of the massive YouTube channels uh, uh, that are put out, put, published by Christians, former Christians rather, people raised as a Christian who now are atheists and they share about their doubts and their story of how they end up becoming atheists. They interview biblical scholars, who many of whom often were raised Christians and are now atheists. And this is just sort of watering um, their doubt, uh, the seeds of doubt. And it's sort of like Jack Jack's beanstalk. It just, the doubts just grow and grow. Now, uh, this particular video was, was an interview with Dr. Bart Ehrman, who is one such former Christian, you know, raised a Christian, now an atheist. And uh, it's about four misconceptions of, that Christians have of the New Testament. And this video I'm doing here is just a selection of one of those misconceptions. Now, uh, the doubt that arises in, in, for a Christian in watching something like this is from coming from two directions. First, there's information outside of the Bible whether it's the church fathers or Roman history or what have you, that Christians just simply aren't aware of. They're just not educated on all the context of, the, of what happened after the Bible, after the apostles, and so on. And so there's a ton of new information they often just have never heard and have no ability to refute, and they simply have to trust, trust the expert. Sometimes that information is accurate, sometimes it's exaggerated, sometimes it's just a falsehood, or sometimes it's a different of inter difference of interpretation, what have you. But again, the Christian who's doubting can't really discern this, and so they're just trusting the expert. Uh, the second problem is that the expert, a biblical scholar, will refer to information actually within the Bible, internal to the Bible. And it may be, again, this information is perfectly accurate, and that Christian that person raises a Christian, simply has, has never noticed this, or they haven't heard it taught to them in Sunday school or what have you. So it's, it's new information in that they just haven't noticed it. So, but then again, it can also be an exaggeration or a wrong interpretation or, um, or simply a difference of opinion. So all of this stuff gets thrown into the bucket uh, and is, is watering this, uh, this doubt. Now, there's two basic views on the Bible. There's what you'd call the traditional view that Christians have, traditional conservative evangelical type scholarship. It doesn't have to be evangelical, but traditional biblical scholarship. Things that Christians have believed for thousands of years, like John the Apostle wrote the Gospel of John and, and so on. And then there's the critical scholarship, which is sort of the last 200 years or so worth of, of sort of extra skeptical kind of scholarship uh, toward these traditional views. Now, some of the traditional views are um, are, tr are traditional only in, our, only in our own heads and actually haven't even been the traditional view across Christianity. Uh, but sometimes the traditional views aren't quite uh, right. And I don't mean, we're not talking about doctrines here. We're just talking about sort of the ways in which we view the Bible. And then some of the critical views are definitely not right. So uh, trying to sort through this can be can be very challenging. So you only have two options. One is you can just educate yourself more, both on the Bible, which is definitely a route you should follow uh, internally, just reading the Bible and taking it more seriously, what it actually says. And then the second thing, which is also really healthy to do, particularly if you're younger and have a long life in front of you, uh, and you want to um, have confidence in your faith and be able to communicate these things uh, to, to other people, is you have to sort of arm yourself with some some of the information outside of the Bible and learn there too. Now, for the time being, you can at least send some pe some people over to iPub and to videos like this and get sort of a, a response where I, I do have some expert knowledge and can speak to some of these things. So again, this is just uh, a video on one of the four misconceptions. Um, and... Uh, and it's and the original audience I did the whole video for I assumed was basically a skeptical audience. So you have to keep in mind I'm I'm talking about this particular misconception with the assumption that is more or less a skeptical audience that's that's listening to the video. Anyway, I hope this proves helpful to you.
Christianity was relatively unified in the first few centuries and only became theologically diverse and fragmented with time. The further you go back, the more united Christianity is. Yeah, I would say the only people who would say that are people who haven't read any sources from early Christianity. <laughs> you know, it's, it's interesting that um, just in the New Testament, when you read the letters of Paul, you know, somebody might notice that Paul in virtually every letter is attacking his Christian enemies who say things that he disagrees with. That in Galatians, he thinks that they don't even have salvation, even though they're Christian apostles. And in 2 Corinthians, he makes fun of them. And it's like every letter he's attacking these people, they're not unified at all. Um, Paul has disagreements with Peter on rather what Paul considers to be a major issue. And he publicly calls Peter a hypocrite. When you get into the second and third centuries, we have forms of Christianity that are completely unlike anything that evolved into what we think of as Christianity. We have Christian groups who claim that there are, there's not just one God, the creator, there are two gods, literally two gods. The God of the Old Testament is literally not the God of Jesus. Um, you have Christians who say there are 36 gods. We know one Christian group, they're Christians. They call themselves Christians. They say they're followers of Jesus. We say there are 365 gods. And they, they claim that they're following the teachings of the apostles because they have writings that the apostles, Peter, John, James, etc., wrote. So uh, Christianity was hugely diverse in the second and third centuries. The diversity that we know today between, say, Greek Orthodox and Mormons is actually pale by comparison because <laughs> of what they had in the early centuries. Okay, so was Christianity initially unified and then fragmented later over time? Well, I agree with him. It's sort of yes and no. I mean, the books themselves describe, uh, the New Testament books describe confrontation and, and opposition from right within the early churches, the apostolic churches in Jerusalem and in this, the areas where churches were first established, according to the book of Acts. So he's, he's right about that. But uh, I couldn't quite tell if, if, if he meant that there was no orthodox line of teaching uh, I mean, it's certainly the simplest way to interpret all the evidence is that the, the, is that the, the basic events that were common, commonly important to Christians and described the same way in the Gospels. In fact, the fact that the very fact that the Gospel writers depend upon other uh, Gospels for their their content uh, and just uh, the unity of the teachings is that there was this thing called Christianity, which is or there was an orthodox line of teachers and teachings that came out of the apostles. I think that's the simplest conclusion to draw from the fact that there is so much unity in all these early uh, Christian writers. Um, now, uh, so again, there's confrontation for sure, but but there's a, but it's it's a reaction to something that's going out about the story of Jesus and the significance of, of Jesus. Now, if he means to, by the Peter and Paul uh, di, uh, di disagreement there in uh, Galatians two, that there that even the apostles themselves didn't really have an orthodoxy about the gospel and how to interpret Jesus, I think that's sort of clearly wrong. Uh, I mean, just read the argument of Galatians one and two. And what you'll conclude, what you should conclude, if you can follow an argument, is that uh, that the Paul is actually making the opposite point that I think Ehrman was trying to make uh, in referencing in referencing it. Paul's argument is that the gospel does, is not from humans. That's the whole argument of Galatians one and two. You can read it for yourself. Not even apostolic humans are the source of the gospel. It came from God. It's dependent upon the authority of God, not upon any human. And the story of Peter, where he, he refused to associate with Gentiles, socialize with Gentiles up in Antioch, and then got rebuked by Paul, the reason he's called a hypocrite is, because, is precisely because Peter, as Paul has already told us earlier in chapter 2, Peter and James and John and Paul all agreed about what the gospel is. So the fact that Peter acted in a way that was inconsistent with orthodoxy, with the very fundamental truth of the gospel, uh, which, which none of them believed they got from anyone other than Jesus, then that makes Peter a hypocrite. He's acting in a way that's inconsistent with the orthodoxy that he knows to be true. So if Ehrman means anything other than that, which I think he was trying to say that, they, that sort of even the apostles were fragmented, I think is, is just nonsense. The other, sometimes people will say James and, and Paul disagree and again, this is just people not reading these uh, these letters uh, very closely. It's Paul who says that faith works. I'll say that again. 
James, yes, James said faith without works is dead. Paul actually says faith works. This is those exact words in Galatians 5. Go check me on it. I, I, uh, I, I hope you do to see that Paul and James agree. Uh, they, 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 were, they never needed to be reconciled in the first place. Uh, second century Christianity, for sure, there was greater fragmentation, absolutely. Uh, and um, the, but the second century writers connect, that, that's why the second century writers connect themselves directly to apostles and to the succession of, succession of leaders who came out of the apostles. There's lists, you know, of the people who were connected to the apostles. Polycarp was a disciple of John. Papias knew John. Irenaeus knew Polycarp. Clement, uh, Ignatius, you know, they're, they're, they connect themselves to ab- apostles or disciples or to each other. And uh, so obviously uh, this sort of personal connection goes back to the apostles. That, that's the way they see it anyway. And the very fact that they're saying that is, uh, is because they believe that adds uh, to the to their uh, pos- it strengthens their position for orthodoxy and of course for me uh, I think for most Christians who are reading uh, you know Irenaeus or Ignatius or Polycarp or Clement or uh, or, or um, uh, whatever any of these writers I mean you 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 see a connection between these writers and their teachings and what you see in the New Testament. So there, there's obviously a sort of an orthodox line there, even though there's a lot of fragmentation. And by the way, it's why the, the, the heretics ended up in the second century in particular writing so much of their literature um, because they're, they're, they're reacting against what was a, uh, an orthodoxy that already had credibility and, and stability within the churches. And so they're, they're creating writings now to try and uh, p- p- pretend that these writings were apostolic and, and vindicate their version of Christianity. So I, again, I think Ehrman's sort of half right about this. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't want to paint the situation as if there was this pristine form of Christianity from the start, and only later were there, were there you know, a long time later was, was there heresy. But at the same time, I think that's all in the, in the, in the writings of the New Testament, and any Christian could see that uh, on their own.